So the big books box is here and wow do I mean big. <laughs> Just to say that uh, full disclaimer books have sent these out for review. I don't get to keep these ones. It's lovely to have a good look at them and let you know what I think of them. In that books box <laughs> was the Note Air 2 and what a great device that is. And there's the Max Lumi, which is not the Max Lumi 2 incidentally, this is the Max Lumi. And this video is just gonna be a quick run through of what's the aim of books devices and why you might choose one of these over let's say the Remarkable or the Supernote. I think all of these eating devices are blooming great choices. They've got the Nova Air, this is a 7.8 inch um, device, great device with some comparisons that I'll link up here. And this is the Note Air 2, which is their latest 10.3 inch screen device. So that's basically an A5 screen device. And this is the Max Lumi, the first one. This is the Max Lumi. And this is an A4 size, basically. So this is an absolute beast. I'll do individual review videos of each of these, but I just want to talk to you about books and what they're trying to do with e-ink tablets as well. tagline is like a tablet unlike any tablet and what they mean by that is that they want you to be able to do anything on their devices that you can do on an ordinary Android tablet so what I'm going to show you here is not around every single feature of these devices but I'm going to show you one or two key things about them if you've got any questions or things you'd like to know about books or what the comparisons are to any other ink device then please do let me know how to set up the Google Play Store because lots of people want to know that when they first get the device. So to enable Google Play, what you're going to need to do is go to Apps and from the menu here, go to App Management. And in App Management, you need to go down here, Enable Google Play. What you have to do is go and register the device with Google Play. Now the reason for this is because Google Play certify that the device will work with all the apps on Google Play. And this device isn't Play Protect certified out of the box. That's not to say you can't Play Protect certify it. So what you have to do here is bind your books to your Google account. So this is called the Google Play Certification Register or something like this, in which case pop in your email. Just use whichever email you normally use with Google Play. Don't forget to grade this bit out okay? and obviously your password. And then that's actually asked me on my phone if I want to confirm that's me. Yes, that's me. And then you tell it you're not a robot and go ahead and register. So now that has registered the device. What won't happen now is that you'll be able to access Google Play, but hopefully the Google Play Store will be there. You click on that. It says it isn't Play Protect certified. It is, you just need to wait. And it won't be very long. You don't need to restart the device. It will be about five minutes and come back and you'll probably find that it's done. So all you then need to do is just to sign into your Google account and that is done. Although you may find in the first instance, it's still not play protected. You do just have to wait. Some people think that restarting the device will make it quicker. I don't think that's true. All that's happening is that it just takes a few moments for all the Google servers to catch up that you are now registered, or this device is now registered with Google Play. My advice is to just be patient. It will work. You know, take time, go get a haircut, chill out. This one, actually, it took until the next day to be enabled. And it was just a case of uh, coming back onto it, turning it back on again and pressing enable again. I didn't have to sign in again, but there it was. So it took almost sort of 48 hours. Whereas in the Nova Air, I remember it took about five minutes to update on the cloud. And this literally the second time I checked, so it must have taken less than a minute on the Max Lumi to actually enable Google Play. So a bit of a luck of the draw. Maybe it's what's going on with the Google servers at that point. Maybe it's time in the working week, but it will work. And as you can see now, the Google Play Store works just fine. And you can get any app at all, any app that you could possibly like. 
Whether you should or not is another question. But what I will say for books is that their app store is very good and it's already got more apps than any of their competitors. You've already got lots of different readers to choose from, news, study tools, productivity apps, all the word ones there. And that means that they've optimized it. Things like having the Gboard installed makes me feel right at home because I am an Android user already. You can have the Chrome browser with all of your add-ins as well on that and Trello, Outlook, etc. As I say, what they're really going for is that you can do everything that you would do on any other tablet on this e-ink screen. They're a bit different to the other e-ink devices because of that, because they're trying to give you an experience like any tablet, but with the benefits of the e-ink screen. So I will do some comparisons with these devices and some of the other e-ink tablets that I've tried out, but I can already tell you that the people that I would recommend these devices to will be the more technically minded of you. There is just more to learn. So I would strongly recommend that you spend a little bit of time with the user manual if this is your first time getting one of these. They're gonna have a steeper learning curve than some of the other ones, but then they're gonna reward you for that with all the other options and things you can do. So it is the most techy, but it also makes it the most open and you can literally do far more on these than you can on any other e-ink device. Buy with that expectation that you're gonna to have to go through a bit of a learning process. And if you're comfortable solving problems, fiddling with a few settings, then I think these are really good options. <laughs> They'd call it a mighty e-ink tablet, brilliant. Because there is lots of different options that you can use. I wonder what's in the safety guide. I don't particularly want it to read this to me, but you can. You can read it, have it read to you. They also have the most powerful of the processors and the most RAM, etc. All the kind of features that you'd expect from a normal Android device. that it reminded me that I had set it to the white brush. The thing that I've really loved doing on this so far is actually drawing. And as you can see, you can. I must say I'm not a fan of the fact that it seems to have to do this rendering notes business every single time you move something around. But as you can see, you can produce some really nice and pleasing things with the drawing tools. And what I've been doing is using the layers to do a kind of tonal layer and then a pencil layer and then a pen on top layer, an inking layer. So there's a really nice workflow of drawing with these with this tablet. Also, just to say, the pen does feel fantastic. It feels like pen and pencil. And you can get a good range of tones. You can change tones, different grays and different colors and different styles of pen. And I love the fact that you can save some custom pens to this top row here. That's a really nice feature. For drawing, of course, the larger Max Lumi is a really good shout if you're keen on drawing. I did really enjoy drawing on this, so do look into that. Essentially the three options that they've sent me to try out are the three sort of paper screen sizes you'd expect. The Max Lumi is somewhere near A4 sized. And this larger screen, I must say I really enjoyed working with this. This is the Max Lumi and they've now got a Max Lumi 2, which is a similar iterative design. So they've made incremental improvements to it. I'm pretty sure this will get the air treatment next and that will be really nice. It's a lovely design, but it does feel like the end of the last generation rather than the start of the new one.
So I've got a tonal layer. Some ink. Some pencil marks. And then right on top I've put some highlights. It's cool, right? Whereas the air devices, which are sort of A5 size, a little bit bigger than A5 and A6 size respectively a little bit bigger than A6 whereas the air devices are that sort of newer slimmer design going for smaller bezels and things like this magnetic snap and magnetic accessories So what are your thoughts on the books devices and um, ask any questions that you have about them. I'm going to be trying them out, I'm going to be featuring them in comparisons and doing individual reviews of some of them already. I've already got a review of the Air, the Nova Air and I'll do a review, this is the Note Air 2. So buy these if you're someone that's happy with technology and is happy to mess around with settings to get more essentially. There is a steeper learning curve but they can reward you with all that you can do. They're the ones with the Bluetooth, the 64 gigabytes of storage, the higher amounts of RAM, the quicker octa-core processors. You can actually do things like sound and video if you wanted to. You can even do audio notes in the Note app. So it's got lots of productivity, lots of possibilities to it, but it isn't that sort of start it up and plug it and play like maybe the Remarkable or the Super Note might be. Let me know your thoughts in the comments.